Greetings, everybody. Ryan Charles here from Nitty Gritty Studios with a quick run through Core Melt's chromatic color grading plugin for Final Cut Pro 10. Now, in order to add the chromatic plugin onto any shot, simply select a shot, lasso a number of shots, go find your chromatic inside your effects plugins, and double click it. Now, if we go to our first clip here, go into the inspector where it says open chromatic grade, click on that, the panel will open up for chromatic. And you'll see here on the upper left corner, drop down for overall, inside, or outside shape. These are going to be the three main options of where you can place grades in your stack. For now, we're just going to do some overall corrections. So this next little drop down tab right here is all of your options. Let's go ahead and start with the color balance tab. And we're going to go ahead and adjust the exposure. Take a look at the color temperature. That needs to be fixed a little bit as well. That's as far as we can push it. And let's just pump up a little more saturation since you tend to lose a little saturation for underexposed images. And that's about as far as we can push it in this tab. So let's go ahead and add on our Lift Gamma Gain tab to our stack. And let's push this image even further. We'll take our mids, we'll bring them up over here, create some more contrast. We'll bring up the highlights just a tad bit more. Uh, seems a little blown out now, so we'll just drop our shadows get our blacks a little crunchy and there you have it we have a quasi nice balanced and exposed image now let's go ahead and get rid of some of the saturation in these shadows to do that we're going to go over here and go to our HSL or hue saturation luma curves head over to your saturation versus luma now as you go over to the image you'll see a crosshair appears on the screen and look on your graph you'll see a line moving to the point on the graph that corresponds with the proper level of luminosity on the image now, if you click on the image in a certain spot, a keyframe will be created on your graph down below, indicating where that spot is in the image. Now, if we go and drag it, you'll see that it then drops that spot on the image, saturation-wise. Adding a keyframe manually by command clicking creates a movable kind of keyframe, but if you command click on it a second time, it creates a more static keyframe where you can make more precise adjustments. Let's take a look at this next image and one of my favorite functions in chromatic. Let's add on our HSL curve again over here to this image. But this time we're going to go over to the saturation versus hue tab. All right. Now as you go over to the image, you'll see that you get the same crosshair as before appears. And what's really cool is you can actually grab and drag the image itself to change the parameters. As you can see, dragging on the image creates a keyframe in the graph that you can literally drag up and down along with the image. We'll grab our reds here to bring the saturation up there. Grab this yellow green guy also, and as you can see, we're popping the saturation for all these different colors. Pretty cool. Now if you want to change the percentage that the particular effect is having on the image. You can literally drag and drop the percentage right next to it. This is similar to key output percentage in DaVinci Resolve, for those of you familiar. Let's take a look at correcting some skin tones using functionality that's not available in the native Final Cut Pro color tools. Okay, we're gonna go on over here to our tab and we're gonna add on replace color. As you see, you get two color wheels pop up. You have the source color on one side, which when you go onto the image, you'll see your crosshair again, corresponding to the graph. You can select various samples of her skin here. And then this is where the fun begins. You head down over here to output, and as you'll see, you can go to mask, and it'll show you what you have. So you can go down over here onto the graph, lower the tolerance so that it's just her skin being selected. It's okay that we have spill elsewhere. Now if you go over here to the vector graph, you'll see that nothing shows up. So in order to get the actual skin tones to appear on that graph, we're going to go over here to mask, select area affected, and boom, you'll see here as we uh, can get rid of this bottom window so we're only looking at the vector graph, you'll see the skin tones are a little off to the yellowish side. So what we're going to do, we're going to simply come down over here to the graph and we're going to slowly and carefully bump it on over to the skin tone line. So there you go, guys. Quick and easy way to make sure that your skin tones are right on the line. Let's take a look at a scene with a single interview clip cut up into it multiple times and see how group grades can help make our jobs a lot easier. So first we're going to select all of our clips here and we're going to double click the chromatic grade effect to apply them all. And take a look at one, two, 
and three instances of this same interview shot in this sequence. Head over to the first clip over here. Let's make sure that we have it selected. We'll head up over here into our chromatic grade inspector panel. And you can see right here where it says no group, click new. You can add a little name here. We'll go uh, Duke interview. And then select a color for it as well. You click OK. Now you have a group, new group created, OK? So what happens now is when you go down into the chromatic panel, you'll have a new option where it usually only have overall inside and outside. Now you can add various color effects to this stack here. Let's do an extreme change here just so we can notice these when we look at the other clips. So now to apply this to the other instances of the interviews, simply select that clip, go over in here to your chromatic inspector panel, drop down where it says no group, and select the appropriate group grade. And you'll see that that grade has now been applied to that clip as well. Now what's really cool is it is retrograde and it ripples. So you can go over here, open up the chromatic grade again. Let's change this to the extreme the other direction so we can tell the difference. And as you head on over the timeline to your next shot, you'll see that the changes have rippled over to it. So this is a really great way to grade multiple instances of the same interview in the same sequence at one time. Now let's say you want to compare three shots. The shot before, the shot after, whilst making grades to the shot in the middle. This is exactly what compare buffer is for in chromatic. So let's select the shot that you want to store as buffer still A. Come up over here into the chromatic grade panel and click on A right there. That'll store this still in the bank as your A. Go to the third shot that you want to add as buffer B. Do the same, hit B. And now scroll over to the middle shot, the shot that you actually want to grade. And this is important here, hit your caps lock button at this point. Okay, you'll see this little warning on the lower left screen, rendering compare buffers. Now you go over here to the drop down, and you'll see you have various ways in which you can compare the different shots. Okay, this uh, bottom option over here is seeing all three at the same time, where as you can see here, you can make changes to the middle shot while still looking at the first and third shot. Uh, now, if you select a compare method from the drop-down menu here and nothing seems to happen, zoom out here in your viewer because you have this little compass-looking thing that you can drag across to do your compare. So if you're not seeing that, make sure that you zoom out because it may be hidden behind in your viewer. Now let's take a look at Chromatic's Stacks and Adjustments Preset Gallery as a way to easily save looks moving forward in your color work. Let's take this shot of the cat, for instance, and you'll see here that we have a nice little stack built to color correct and bounce this shot from before. It's the overall grade. Now, if you go to this little gear settings thing here and click it, you'll see that you can go save stack. Now you can name this particular look and add a different category here if you've already created categories, which we haven't. Click OK. And now come to the next door to this little bookmark looking guy. Click on that. Here are going to be your stacks and adjustments presets. And as you'll see, we have cat here saved. Um, and in order to preview what this look looks on a shot, you scroll the cursor back and forth on the image. Uh, so let's say we wanted to actually add this look to another shot. We'll uh, scroll over here on the timeline to this shot, let's say. Um, and now you can see that that look is previewed on this shot instead. And you can double click on it to apply this look onto whatever shot is in the viewer. Now the limitation with these saved stacks, these presets, is that it's only going to save one specific tab at once. For instance, it's not going to save overall inside and outside shapes, but only one of these that you have selected, which isn't that big of a deal because generally I'm only going to be saving overall tabs as presets and looks because generally you're going to want to refine the image individually. Lastly, let's toss on a color LUT, a lookup table to this shot right over here and take a look at this functionality. Now you can load various LUTs that you have downloaded in the past onto your computer by clicking this button right over here. Uh, you can also save adjustments and stacks as LUTs and then import them into your gallery as well this way. If you click open LUT gallery, you'll see you have all the LUTs that you have loaded into your gallery and previewing the look on whatever clip is in your timeline. You can also purchase additional LUTs on top there. Um, but this again is a really great way to scroll through and preview the look of different LUTs on whatever clip you have in your viewer. 
All right, everybody. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this quick 10 minute look at Chromatics plugin from CoreMelt for Final Cut Pro 10 and enjoy your color work. Bye.